All right, so <clears throat> you've decided to do your first meet. Um, everybody gets all excited and then they just want to dive into whatever training they, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to start talking shit about training. Reverse it. Don't cut. Cutting weight doesn't make any sense for your first meet. Doesn't make sense for most people at any point, but specifically your first meet. This is just to gauge how your training has been going. This is to get a total. This is to put numbers together and see where your strength is actually at. You don't need to cut weight. Um, that most of the time is going to hinder your performance. You don't want another variable going into your first meet. You want to know what worked and what didn't with your strength training. Once you have that dialed in, then you can talk about weight cuts, but it doesn't make sense to add in another variable when you're just trying to figure out things as they sit in your original attempts at these weights. Um, so getting caught up in the cutting weight thing, I don't think is a great idea for your first meet. I'm never really into that when someone asks me about it. I always say, just go in and be as strong as possible because that's what this is about anyway. Something you need to bring, food and lots of it. These meets go, can go on from eight to 12 hours, depending on how many people there are. Um, bringing food is important, a cooler. Of course, it's good to like run out and get a sub or a pizza or whatever you can get close by, but you never know what's gonna be there and you never know how your stomach's gonna feel. So bringing a lunchbox with stuff that you know always settles well with you, um, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, fruit snacks, stuff with uh, relatively high carb and sugar content um, is stuff that I like to go with, kind of keep me up for the whole day. Um, Gatorade fluids are huge, so you wanna be drinking the whole day um, to stay hydrated because it's, you don't really understand the toll of three max effort lifts or nine max effort lifts in one day until you do it. So it's important to be ready to fuel yourself um, so you can be ready for the next lift. Bring a handler. Now, even if you're a raw person and you don't have knee wraps and you're going completely bare knee, you still want someone there as a gopher. You know, go for this, go for that. Um, Someone who can make your day less stressful. That's their job. It could be anybody. It could be someone who doesn't really know much about powerlifting, but ideally you want it to be one of your training partners or someone who knows your personality enough to say, oh, make a big jump, make a small jump, shut it down there, don't take a third attempt, that sort of thing, and kind of keep you level-headed. Excuse me. Um, that's the sort of thing that you want from a handler. Um, someone that can bring you back to reality when your emotions get really high because you're in the middle of a, you know, a, a high adrenaline situation um, and you want to make sure that your attempts um, are accurate and, and realistic. So that sort of rolls into the next thing. Realistic numbers. Something you did in the gym with no stress, no audience, no judges is going to be hard to replicate in your first meet. So looking at it and being realistic with yourself, what can you do? with the regulations of an actual powerlifting meet, not what can you do with your friend's hands on the bar when you're benching something. So <clears throat> it's important to look at, the, look at your videos, look at your lifts in the gym and say, okay, I can do this to the judge's standards. I can't do that, so I'm gonna take a small PR. More likely than not, what you've done in the gym is not going to be hit on your first uh, powerlifting meet just based on stress alone. So you want realistic numbers. Um, if the small PRs are there, of course, take them. Um, if you have someone who's very experienced helping with you and preparing you, they can help you assess that situation and what jumps you should take and what jumps you shouldn't take. Write down all of your attempts and the different ways you could get there. Write down what you would total if you just got your openers, just got your second attempts, just got your third attempts. Write down what you would get if you get your first attempt squat, second attempt bench, and first attempt deadlift, so that you know, so that if you're going for a specific total, you know what you have to pull on your last deadlift to try and get that. Um, also, if you have everything written down, you don't have to second guess. If you miss your first squat on a command, you look right at the paper and say, I'll stick to the plan, I'm gonna take it again. I'm not gonna go up, I'm gonna take it again, get into the meat, because that's what your first meat is about. Getting through the meat, surviving the meat, having numbers, to base your percentages off of or whatever it may be moving forward in training. Openers. Openers for your first meet should be something you could do any day of the week. They, could, they should be something you could walk into the gym, hungover, tired, underfed, whatever it may be, and you could do for maybe a double or a very easy single. You want to build confidence as you go through the meet, especially your first meet. So your openers, get them out of the way. Something light, something you can make a reasonable jump 
to something that you want to hit with your next lift, but something that you could do with your eyes closed, no problem, something you've hit in the gym several times. I think people get hung up on openers. It doesn't matter where you start. It's more so where you finish. So don't get caught up in trying to have a huge opener. Have an easy opener, smoke it, and move on to the next one. Guidance. You want, in an ideal world, someone who's been through a powerlifting meet before to help you get through your first powerlifting meet, help you train for it. Now, if you don't have that um, option, there's tons of stuff on the internet you can use to look at and read people's experiences and whatnot so that you can have that guidance through someone else. Um, but in an ideal world, you want someone to help you through it. Um, even if you're reading someone's training logs and going off of that, um, or if you just have a buddy that, that's done it before and you can bounce ideas off of them, making sure that you're making the right decisions. You kind of want to have guidance going through your first meet. And then you can look back and see like, how did this person help? How did this person not help? What do I need to work on? Who can help me get better at that specific thing I need to work on? Um, that being said, sticking to the program that you are assigned or that you chose for the meet, stick to that program. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter... Um, who wrote it or what you heard about after you started, just run that program into your meet and then adjust it after. Switching programs, switching plans, all this stuff, when you're within six weeks of a meet is just going to mess you up. It's going to make you unconfident um, and most likely it's, it's going to hinder your performance. So I think it's important to whatever plan you have, stick to it, see it through as long as it's reasonable. Um, and get through the meet. Uh, that's the most important thing. You want to have an, a positive experience the first time you do a powerlifting meet. So make sure that you go seven for nine, eight for nine, whatever it may be, um, and stay the course that you have chosen. And that way, if there is something majorly wrong with it, the next time around, you can change that. Okay, the last thing that I want to go over for your first powerlifting meet, something that was shared with me before my first powerlifting meet, and it really stuck with me. People are not going to remember your numbers. They're going to remember how you conduct yourself. So act accordingly. People will remember you for how you treat others, not for what your second attempt was. So keep that in mind moving forward. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. If you have anything that you want me to go into further detail on or you need clarification on uh, or another topic that you'd like me to go over on this page, feel free to send me a message or uh, drop something in the comment. I hope this was helpful.